Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing my mock lottery draft. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me who you want your team to take if they have a lottery pick. Roxanne, Roxanne, all she wanna do is party all night. Goddamn, Roxanne, never gonna love me, but it's alright. At number one, I have Minnesota taking Anthony Edwards. A few months ago, a lot of people were split over who would be first pick. But now that we know who has the first pick, I think most people are convinced will be Edwards. They have one of the best centers in the league in Carl Anthony Towns, so they won't take Wiseman. And they have a nice point guard in D'Angelo Russell, so they won't take another point guard. So Edwards is the best option for the T-Wolves. He can play the 2 or the 3, and he's a great scorer who averaged 19.1 points in college. He's an upgrade over Cat's former partner Andrew Wiggins, and with a good point guard as well, you can expect the T-Wolves to make the playoffs pretty soon. At number 2, I've got Golden State taking James Wiseman. Some people think Denny Abija would be a better choice for the Warriors since they're known for playing small ball. But if the Warriors still want to do that in their new reloaded team, then why are they trying to sign Giannis? The 7 foot 1 Wiseman will be a great fit at centre for Dub Nation, and if Giannis signs in 2021, the Warriors will have a great team that can contend in the playoffs. Wiseman only played 3 games in college due to an NCAA suspension, but he averaged 19.7 points and 10.3 rebounds, as well as 3 blocks a game, making him similar to players like Andre Drummond and Hassan Whiteside. At number 3, I think the Hornets will take Danny Avija. The Hornets would have liked to take Wiseman since they're weak at the centre spot, but since he's unavailable, I can see them taking Avija. Not many know about Avija since his stats don't look good on paper, but we must consider the fact that he was playing against Go Men in the EuroLeague, something Wiseman and Edwards didn't do. Avija can play both forward positions, and if he fits into Charlotte's team as well as we all hope, the Hornets could be one of those fun young teams who fight for 8 seed, similar to the last season's Memphis Grizzlies. At number 4, I think the Bulls will take Obar Toppin. Obar is a power forward, like young Bulls star Laurie Malkinen, and the games are somewhat similar too. Lurie and Obai are both comfortable 3 point shooters and both are solo rebounders. However, Obai is 3 inches smaller, which makes me think he could play small forward if necessary. Obai averaged 20 points and 7.5 rebounds in college, and he should fit into the ball court nicely. At number 5, I've got the Cavs taking Isaac Okoro. I really like the Cavs team right now. They have a great young backcourt with Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, and a great frontcourt with Andre Drummond and Kevin Love. A small forward would really be the final cherry on top, and that's where Okoro comes in. At 6'6 six six at 225 pounds, he's a complete small forward. He knows how to play defense too, averaging one steal and one block a game in college. His shooting is a problem, but if you overlook that detail, he should fit into Cleveland's team quite nicely, and for the first time since LeBron left, Cleveland fans should be excited about their season. With a sixth pick, I think Atlanta will take Onyeka Okogwu. The Hawks recently acquired Clinker Palo in a trade, but they do have poor rebounding stats, so I'm sure they'd happily take a backup center. Okongwu is only 6'9", but he averaged an impressive 8.2 rebounds in college, as well as 16.2 points and 2.7 blocks. I can see Capella starting this season, but by late 2021 Okongwu might have the starting spot. At 7, I think Detroit will take Lamelo Ball. You're probably wondering why I think Lamelo won't go top 5, and that's because the top 6 are either set at point guard or need to improve another position more. Cue Detroit. After trading Drummond, they might be the most underwhelming team in the whole league, with young players who haven't met their potential, as well as Blake Griffin's massive contract but they'd love a point guard. They do have Derek Rose, but he could leave in the offseason, and even if he doesn't, we know he's happy to be the sixth man. It would not only be a good marketing move to bring in fans, but Ball could seriously help the team. They lack scorers, and Lamelo averaged 17 points in the NBL. I can't see Lamelo play out his entire career in Detroit, but even if he gives them four years, will certainly help the team. At eight, I think New York will take Killian Hayes. Like Detroit, the Knicks need a point guard, and with Lamelo gone, I think Hayes is their man. At 6 foot 5, Hayes plays similar to Lamello, as well as other tall point guys like Ben Simmons. Hayes averaged 12.8 points at 6.2 assists in the Euro Cup this year, and when you put a great passer in Hayes along with a great scorer in RJ Barrett, it should make a perfect fit. With the ninth pick, I think Washington will take Patrick Williams. Williams is another product without much hype, but he might have the best athleticism out of anyone in the draft. With John Wall and Bradley Beal already in the team, the Wizards won't need a guard, but instead of forward. Williams is that guy. He's athletic, he can set a screen, he can play defense, he's a perfect fit for this Wizards team. At 10, I think Phoenix will draft Tyrese Halliburton. The Suns are coming off an amazing run in the bubble, and if they want to do an even better run, they should upgrade the point guard position. Halliburton can do that. At 6'5", he plays the point guard position, and he does it well. Averaging 6.5 assists in college, Halliburton's main role in Phoenix will be to set up the plays and let Devin Booker be the pure scorer we all know he is. With the 11th pick, I've got the Spurs taking Devin Vassell. The Spurs may have missed the playoffs for the first time since 1997 this year, but they're still in an okay position. Well, I think they would want as a shooter, and Devin Vassell is exactly that. At 6'7", he plays the small forward position, and last year in college he averaged 12.7 points off 41% three-point shooting. He's also a solid defender, which expects San Antonio to take him if he's still available. With the 12th pick, I think the Kings will take Leandro Bomaro. 
Most people have Bomaro going drafted about 5 picks lower than I've put him, so you may be wondering why I have him at 12. But if a body heal trade does go through, then this could be his replacement. While Bomaro doesn't shoot as well as healed, he can still score, averaging 14.6 points in the Euro League. Could be a risk, but it might pay off. With the 13th pick, I reckon New Orleans will draft Cole Anthony. It's sad to see Anthony's downfall. Many had him as the first pick back in 2019, but he struggled this year and shows that he struggles at scoring against bigger players. But even so, he still should fit into New Orleans' time. He can rotate his starting position with Lodzo and play the point, or he can be Drew Holiday's backup at the two. He averaged 18.5 points this year at UNC, showing that despite his flaws, he's still a great scorer. The shape he may not be the superstar we hoped he'd be, but he still has a future in the NBA. And with the 14th pick, I have Boston taking Kira Lewis Jr. Kira Lewis Jr. could be the most overlooked player in the draft. Lewis is a speedy point guard with the ability to score the basketball at ease, averaging 18.5 points in college, as well as 5.2 assists, 4.8 rebounds, and 1.8 steals. Obviously, Lewis won't start over Kemba Walker, but he can still provide some spark off the bench. That's all for today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me who you want your team to take if they have a lottery pick.